everybody, welcome to the Cincy Junior Sabbath School Life Show. My name is Happy. My name is Emanuela. And my name is Jared. We also do have a special guest here with us today. Can you please introduce yourself and also what you do? Uh, I'm Dennis Elisha Kawosa. I'm the pastor for Niles Michiana Ghanaian Church. Thank you for joining us. So before we start the show, I'm going to lead us into an opening prayer. So can we close our eyes and bow our heads? Gathering all of us here today to be able to learn more about you. Pray that the show goes successfully and that we learn something from it. In your mighty name I pray, amen. Amen. So Hope TV does replay our videos on their satellites Sundays at 12 p.m. and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. And then CB Radio plays our videos both Facebook and YouTube every Monday at 7 o'clock p.m. EST. So next our Bible verse of the day. Bible verse of the day is Bible verse that you read throughout the week or Bible verse that you read throughout the lesson that we want to share with everyone. So mine is found from Revelation chapter 22, verse 7, and it says, Look, I'm coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the, wor the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. Amen. 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 Mine is found from Acts 2, verse 38, and it says, Peter said to them, Change your hearts and lives and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Then God will forgive your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, my verse comes from Psalms chapter 90, verse 17, which says, And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yeah, the work of our hands establish thou it. Amen. 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 So now we're going to move on to our PowerPoint discussion. This week we're on Lesson 10, and the title for the PowerPoint is Just the Beginning of Praise. And the power text is found from 2 Timothy, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 18, and it says, And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So now Emmanuel will give us a summary of the PowerPoint lesson. So this week's lesson is about Jesus' second coming and how it will be on this earth after his um, second coming. So it was saying that graves will open, you know, many people will wake. Those who are dead, they'll come back alive. Those who were already alive, you know, they'll all gather around. People who um, were like sick or had disease, all of that will be gone. All that will go away. It will be like renewed, have a new body and everything. And it goes on to explain how it will be in heaven, you know, the trumpets that will blow and how we'll be able to finally see our Father's house and finally be able to see what Jesus gave up in heaven to decide to come on to this earth. He decides to come on to this earth and gave up like many things that he had in heaven, which are like the gold gates and everything that was made of gold, the many different fruits, vegetables, everything that was there in heaven. He gave all of that up to come on to this earth. So it's saying the many differences that it will have like from earth to heaven, how different both earth and heaven will be. And that's basically where the story ends. Thank you, Manuela, for your summary. So now we're going to have Jared and also Pastor Dennis join us in the discussion. So the first question for the PowerPoint is, what can we do right now to prepare for Jesus' second coming? Um, right now, what we can do to prepare for his second coming is to live righteous lives so that in that case, when he comes again, we'll be able to go with him. Also, during that time, we can also spread his, the word of God so that when he comes again, many people will be able to go with him as well and have ready hearts as well. Yeah, and um, just also um, to add to that, just to read the scriptures to make sure you know what time we're in and to um, feed your spirit so that you can stand strong for his second coming. And then, Pastor Dennis, what can we do right now to prepare for Jesus' second coming? We just have to get ready by living a righteous life. And that should lead us to study the word of God, pray, and ask for forgiveness all the time. Ask for the Holy Spirit to lead us in whatever we do. And by doing that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be ready for the second coming of Christ. Thank you, Pastor, for your response. So the next question is, what does Jesus mean when he said that he will change? we will be changed when we're on our way to our new home in heaven? Um, as I was saying in the summary, it means that there will be no more like sin. There will be no more deformities. Let's say right now on this earth, you have like many sicknesses or you have this on your skin or that on your skin or your body is a certain way. When Jesus comes again, all of that will change. You'll be renewed, given a new body, new life and everything. Yeah, um, that's what I was going to basically say um, that we'll have new bodies 
so we won't have to worry about sickness um if we have um something wrong with us um we'll be healed completely and um we won't have to worry about taking medicine or um anything that um is supposed to heal us since we'll already be healed completely and then, Pastor, what does Jesus mean when he said that we'll be changed on our way to our new home in heaven? What Jesus means is that um, maybe I am here on earth. I have one eye. But when Jesus comes, I will be transformed and I will not lose any eye when I get into heaven. You will be. That's what the Bible says. You'll be changed. This mortal body must put on immorality. So you will be actually be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ to be translated to heaven. Thank you, Pastor, for your answer. So the last question from the PowerPoint is, if you could use one word to describe how heaven would be, what word would you use and why? I would have to use breathtaking because it's going to be just like how the story was saying, how there's so many differences from what earth is like to what heaven is like. Like I can't even imagine how it would be. And the fact that everything's like made of gold, these walls are made of gold, floor is made of gold, it's just going to be a sight unseen, making it breathtaking. Um, I would say peace, um, since there won't be any wars there, um, there won't be any violence, there won't be any hatred in heaven. So um, that's why we use the word peace. And lastly, Pastor, uh, if you could use one word to describe how heaven would be, what word would you use and why? Thank you. <laughs> That's a good question. In fact, to be honest with you, I don't think there is any word that I will be able to use to describe what I will see in heaven. Because the Bible says, I has not seen nor ear heard. Not as it enter into the heart of man, what God has prepared for us. So it's actually beyond description. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for your answer. And also thank you to Jeremy Manuela for your responses for the PowerPoint discussion. Now we're going to move on to this week's riddle. This week's riddle is, this tiny man was able to defeat a giant with only a pebble and a sling, and soon after was elected king. Who is he? So I'll read it one more time. This tiny man was able to defeat a giant with only a pebble and sling, and soon after was elected king. Who is he? So I'll say the answer at the end. Okay, so I hope our viewers were listening to the riddle so they're able to answer the um, riddle towards the end of the show. So now we're going to head on to our cornerstone part. We're also on lesson 10 for the cornerstone and the title is front and center. And the key text is found from Mark chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. And it says, Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath? to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill, but they remain silent. Amen. So now Jerry will give us a summary of the Cornerstone lesson. Okay, um, this week's lesson was about Jesus. Um, it was about the many times that he went into the synagogue and he healed people. Um, when he was in the synagogue, there would be times where he would heal people's hands. Um, so while he was healing people's hands, there would be times where um, other people were called the Pharisees would come and basically um, question him, um, just try to bring up charges against him and make him seem like a bad person and um, guilty. Um, they were called the Pharisees. Um, so when the Pharisees would question him and just try to make him look guilty, Jesus would respond saying, is it lawful to do um, good on the Sabbath? He would say, yes, it was, since the Pharisees would be asking him whether it was good to do or not. So when Jesus said this, um, obviously they didn't like the response since they wanted to question him and make him look guilty. So there would be other times when they would question him and Jesus would give them other responses. Um, another response that Jesus um, gave them was um, if a sheep um, went into a pit, would they just leave the sheep there and not do anything since it was the Sabbath? Or would they go ahead and go try to get the sheep from the pit? And um, the Pharisees were silent. And um, Jesus responded saying that it would be lawful to go and get the sheep from the pit. Um, so that's basically the summary. Just was talking about how Jesus was in the synagogues healing people and how the Pharisees were basically trying to make him look guilty and um, just 
um, act in their pride and be too lawful. And that's where the summary ends for this week's lesson. Thank you, Jerry, for your summary for the Cornerstone lesson. So now we're going to head into our Cornerstone discussion, having Emanuela and also Pastor join us in the discussion. So the first question for the Cornerstone discussion is, what is the important reason why we keep the Sabbath holy? Um, it was a commandment from God, and it allows us to have a day of rest um, so that we can, you know, have rest for our bodies and for our minds and that we can um, rejuvenate our spirit. Um, to add on to what Jared was saying, it is a law that um, God has given unto us. And Jesus says in the Bible, if you love me, follow my commandments. So because keeping the Sabbath day holy is one of his commandments, out of the love that we have for him, we follow the Sabbath. And then Pastor Dennis, what is the important reason why we keep the Sabbath holy? It is a commandment from God. God simply asks us to keep the Sabbath as a reminder of his creative power. So when we keep the Sabbath, it reminds us that God is indeed the creator of this world. Thank you, Pastor, for your answer. So the next question is, how do we keep the Sabbath day holy? Um, by not engaging with things that um, don't relate to God and instead um, using that time to grow with him, whether it's um, reading the scriptures, um, memorizing scriptures, being with people um, who are like-minded, and um, just um, being able to have time alone and pray to him and just um, connect more with him. Yeah, I agree with Jared. Um, on the Sabbath day, you know, you have been given six days to do what you like, go to work, do this, do that. So on the Sabbath day, it's the day that you keep holy. It's a day of rest where you spend time with God, even extra more time to um, actually like rest in him. And to add on to that, most people think, oh, well, because it's a Sabbath, you know, maybe if I go and help this person, I can't do so because it's a Sabbath. But Jesus' character was to help people, just like in the story, he was helping people on the Sabbath. So it doesn't mean that we on this earth, we can't go help others as well. On the Sabbath, if we find that someone is sick, God would want us to go help that person so we can go and help that person on the Sabbath. And then, Pastor Dennis, what are your thoughts on how do we keep the Sabbath day holy? Okay. Um, the Sabbath is a time of worship. For me, I feel, I usually feel that the Sabbath is a time for me to build my relationship with God. I come to church or I go to church to meet God. And that is a time that I believe that it's more like heaven and earth are actually connected together. So, in fact, it's a blessing to be in church to worship God on the Sabbath. What can we tell about Jesus from this story? Um, that Jesus was a healer and he didn't let other people um, like the Pharisees and the ones who were questioning him stop him from fulfilling his purpose which was um, healing the people who were sick. Yeah, I agree with Jared. Um, to add on to that, I remember the lesson that we did with Pastor Kodro. He was telling us that if Jesus let what the Pharisees were telling him, like diminish what he was saying and like doing and be like, oh, because they said this, I won't do it, then he would have not have fulfilled the reason he had come onto this earth. So us too, we could apply to our lives that, you know, like while we're on this earth, we shouldn't just let other people diminish us. God and Jesus, like when he was on this earth, he was a person who would keep on doing things no matter what people thought of it. So we should also do the same. And then lastly, Pastor Dennis, what can we tell about Jesus from this story? Jesus, um, he walked among men, healing their sicknesses and diseases, preaching the word of God. He had compassion on anyone that he comes upon. So we also have to do the same, follow the example of Jesus. And just assume that what would Jesus have done if Jesus was here? This should be the question that we should be asking ourselves during this time. What will Jesus, what will he have done if he is here right now? And just do that to honor his name. Thank you, Pastor, for your answer. And also thank you to Jerdy Manuela for you guys' responses. So, Pastor, can you please give us a moral lesson that you got from the PowerPoint and the Cornerstone lesson? I do believe that Jesus is coming again. And 
in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, reminds us, Jesus himself told the disciples that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And that when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. This is one of the greatest promises of the Bible. And this is the ultimate promise when Jesus comes to fulfill this promise for all of us. So let us live our lives with the hope that Jesus is coming again and that we will love to be with him when he comes. And that will, when the second coming of Christ will put a stop to all the sins and all the troubles, all the pain that we're going through in this world. That is the ultimate goal of every Christian that we will see Jesus coming. And as we wait for Jesus, let us do the work of Jesus by ministering to the sick, visiting the outcast, praying for the sick, helping those who need help, do the works of Jesus, preach his word, live your life so that your life can be a testimony to all those around you so that they can also come to know Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for your moral lesson that you got from the PowerPoint and the Cornerstone lesson. So now we're going to go back to our riddle for today. So don't forget, viewers who are watching, you may put your answer to the riddle in the comments below. So for any viewers that have just joined us, I'll read the riddle again. The riddle says, This tiny man was able to defeat a giant with only a pebble and a sling, and soon after was elected king. Who is he? So what do you guys think it is? I'm going to go with David. Yeah, David. Um, Pastor Dennis, what do you think the answer to the riddle is? I think it's King David. Because actually he was the one who who defeated um, Goliath. He was a tiny man, but God, he went on from there to become the king of Israel. And what about you guys? Why did you choose David? Um, I mean, I know the story. I know the story of David Goliath. Um, Goliath was the um, giant. David was the small one. And um, he was able to defeat him with the Bible. I think he had like five of them on cook. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing as Jared. We all know the story, so. I mean, saying tiny man could mean Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, too. That is true. But the answer to today's riddle is David. Yeah, so you guys are right. Okay, so I hope our viewers were listening and they're able to get the riddle right. So, Pastor, can you please close us out with a closing prayer? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to study your word. We thank you for being with us throughout this lesson. Our brothers and sisters who are listening to us all over the world, wherever they are, may you continue to be with each one of them. Speak to them, touch their hearts wherever they are. And may you continue to bless all of us, abide with us, and continue to live to help us so that we can study your word and be changed like you to the glory of your holy name. We want to say thank you, Lord, for the privilege because we prayed with faith in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So thank you all for joining us. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to our channel. You can find us on YouTube at Cincinnati Ghanaian SCA Church. Hope to catch you guys all next week. Bye.